this morning we're going to move on to the new topic in IMK 209 which is on gas guess what yeah we are, to, we are going to talk about crystallization so this white snow is basically crystals yeah it's a pure crystal so kalau nak buat air batu, ais batu campur you can use this also you just put the syrup put the milk <laughs> yeah so this morning the rest of the emulsion and foam um, I have prepared some video lectures which uh, some of you have problems to access so I'll, I'll try to um, figure out the best way to for you to watch the videos eh? and um, hopefully I can do a few more on the, the rest of the emulsion and foam part especially on the foam but today we are we're going to look at um, the new topic on crystallization so you have I think you've got most of you got have got the slides the question yeah what do chocolate butter margarine ice cream sugar hot candy have in common they contain crystals they contain crystals but they contain different types of crystal sugar crystal is basically sugar sucrose the table sugar that we use every day we put in our tea in our coffee in our food those are the we call we call we call it uh, table sugar yeah and chemically it is sucrose sucrose crystallized from the raw material is what sugar cane sugar beet yeah so we extract the juice we remove the water we remove the, the impurities we remove the foreign materials we remove the gums we remove the pigments we remove all those undesirable components so that the final sugar cane juice or sugar beet juice contain just pure sucrose so we have a pure syrup sucrose syrup or sucrose solution so what we have is sucrose dissolved in water so we have a sucrose solution then from the sucrose solution we have to remove the water as much as possible to make it very concentrated so we remove the water until the concentration of sugar reach a point of super saturation then after that we will induce the process of crystallization meaning the solute the the, the, su the sucrose which is the solute would crystallize out from the solution then we get sugar crystal um, we have a factory here belongs to MSM Malaysian sugar manufacturing in Mak Mandin there so the factory here is actually um, refined the raw sugar so they import the raw sugar the, the raw sugar is in the, in the form of brown 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 sugar yeah so we import from mainly from Australia then they process the brown sugar they remove all the impurities that give the brown color until finally we get the white sugar crystal okay um, last time in Perlis in Chuping we have a sugar factory also and they process from the sugar cane and produce the raw sugar then they 
then uh, the raw sugar can have to be processed further to form this sugar. And you will see the factory is very big. Yeah. But um, what, what we have actually in the sugar factory is a series of uh, evaporators and crystallizers. The evaporators is to remove the water to produce the concentrated sugar syrup and the crystallizer is to uh, carry out the process of crystallization. So in the process of crystallization, one of the critical factors that we have to control is the temperature. The temperature, the mainly uh, the, the rate of cooling and how fast, how fast we cool the, the, the solution, the supersaturated uh, solution. The, so the, the rate of cooling would determine the nature of the crystal that we would get, the size of the crystal, the number of the crystal, the size distribution of the crystal, whether we get uniform size or we get some small crystal, some big crystal. In some type of, uh, in, sometimes we want big crystal. Sometimes we want to have a very tiny, fine crystal. So that when you eat the product, you don't feel, you don't feel and or detect the crystal on your on your tongue. So we want to have a very fine crystal. But sometimes we want to have big crystal. Okay. So we have to control the process of crystallization by controlling the temperature. Yeah, by controlling the degree of supersaturation in order to determine what in order to determine the final uh, specification of crystal that we want. Okay. In product like chocolate, butter and margarine, we have what type of crystal here? Hmm? What type of crystal we have in chocolate, butter, and margarine? Fat. We have fat crystal. Okay. The butter from, we make butter from milk, right? We make margarine from uh, vegetable oil. Our palm oil, we can use to produce margarine. Uh, or any type of, you know, like a plant, uh, vegetable oil, like soybean oil, canola oil, all this oil can be crystallized to form the solid uh, plast plastic type uh, product. We call it plastic, the texture, we call it plastic, not uh, plastic that we normally understand. Yeah? So in here, we have to also control the process of crystallization, control the temperature, yeah? uh, mainly the temperature in order to get the desired texture and the desired type of crystal in the product. For example, in chocolate, one step in the, one critical step in the process of making chocolate, I don't know whether in, now you have already studying about chocolate making? Yeah. Yeah. Lung food commodity. So one of the critical steps in chocolate making is what? Tempering. Right? Tempering process. So what is the purpose uh, of tempering? Temperature. Why do we need to control the temperature? What type of crystal that we want to get in, in the chocolate? What type of crystal? Delta, alpha, beta, beta prime? Huh? Beta. Right, so in order to get that type of crystal only, so we have to control the process of tempering, we control the temperature. We have to heat up, then cool down, then, you know, there are a few steps uh, in, the, in the temperature programming during the tempering. The objective is, finally, at the end of the tempering process, we want to get a beta type crystal in the chocolate. Why do you want a beta type crystal in the chocolate? Because once we have beta type crystal in the chocolate, it will give us the desired properties of chocolate. For example, 
you know, when we mold, uh, when after the chocolate come out from the mold, you know, it will give us a nice uh, shape and a shiny surface. Yeah, and when we break the chocolate bar into say two pieces, you know, it will give the snap uh, property. Yeah, and when we put the chocolate in the mouth, it will also give us the desired melting profile that we always enjoy when we eat when we eat chocolate. So in this type of products, what we need to control during the crystalliz uh, crystallization is actually fat. So we have to understand more about fat here so that we can control the process of crystallization. Fat basically is chemically, they are what? Consists of triglycerides. Yeah? Triglyceride. One triglyceride molecule contains three types of fatty acid. And the fatty acid can be saturated fatty acid or unsaturated fatty acid. And they have different melting points. So in one type of fat or oil, let's say our palm oil, it contains hundreds of triglycerides. Each one will have its own melting point. Meaning that when, let's say we start with a, a liquid oil, so the, the technical term to describe this uh, liquid type uh, material is we call it melt. M-E-L-T, melt, because uh, we imagine that the fat in the liquid form is already melted. Okay? So when we cool down the liquid oil, the palm oil, when the temperature reach the melt, melting point of, say, the one of the triglycerides, so that, trigly, that triglyceride now will start to crystallize. So we cool down the temperature from one, from one high temperature to lower temperature. So when we cool down the temperature at any at a different stage, the different point of the temperatures, uh, different crystallite, different triglycerides will form crystal. So they don't form the triglycerides in the oil, they don't form crystal at the same time because they have different melting points. So this is what we need to understand. The saturated Triglycerides, saturated fat would have a higher melting point than the unsaturated fat. This one I think you should learn in the basic uh, food chemistry or um, um, elsewhere yeah? in, in, in other courses. So, uh, but the point that I, I want to stress here, different triglycerides in the fat or in the oil will have their different melting point and they will crystallize at different temperatures. And therefore, we need to understand more so that we can control the process of crystallization. In ice cream, in ice cream we have more than one type of crystal. What are they? We have what? Ice. We have ice crystal. Then we have fat crystal. Where do this fat crystal come from? Hmm? From? Cocoa butter. Do we have cocoa butter in ice cream? <laughs> in ice cream, what kind of fat? From the milk. Right. So we have ice crystal, we have fat crystal. Um, what other type of possible possible type of crystal we might have sometimes? Sometimes we might have also lactose crystal. Lactose is a type of sugar in the milk. So under certain condition, the lactose might crystallize. So in ice cream, you have more complex crystal crystallized or crystal uh, system. You have ice crystal, we have fat crystal, um, or sometimes you have lactose crystal. So in the process of making ice cream, the idea or the objective is to produce this crystal from ice and from fat. 
And in this case, we want to produce large number, large number of crystal having a very small size. Because when we eat ice cream, you know, you can feel on your tongue, it's very smooth, right? <clears throat> but what happens if you allow the ice cream to melt and recrystallize? You, when you, you buy the ice cream from the shop, take home, when you reach home, it's already <laughs> partially melted or melted, then of course in that form, it's not nice, right? So you put in the freezer again. But this time, the crystallization is not properly controlled. So the process of recrystallization here, this time you don't get the same type of crystal, the same type of crystal size in the original ice cream. So usually you will get more coarse, kasa, yeah? more coarse uh, crystal, and when you eat the ice cream, you feel our, oh, yeah, you can you can feel you can tell the difference, right? So in this topic, we need to understand a few things about crystallization. And in sugar candy, also, uh, we need to control the process of crystallization. So, uh, so we need to understand what, how crystal form in our food. Yeah, how they are formed. What are the factors that affect the process of crystallization? Concentration, the type of solute, the degree of supersaturation, the temperature, the rate of cooling. What is the significance of recrystallization process? Penghaburan semula, just just now mentioned, you know, um, the ice cream. Another example, like chocolate. Sometimes you buy the chocolate bar. I told you uh, you a story recently. Someone sent me a chocolate from Vienna. Expensive chocolate, I think, but when, uh, when I, I, I received the chocolate, it's already become one big slab, <laughs> melted. Yeah? Uh, I guess it's still safe to be eaten, but uh, the texture is not the same because the, uh, when, when the butter fat in the chocolate we have, butter fat. So when the butter fat recrystallize again, it won't give us the same, it won't give us the beta type crystal. The beta type crystal also, there are you know, many types, up to 12. Beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, you know. So we have to control the process to get just the specific type of beta crystal. But um, in the factory, we can control the rate of cooling, we can you know, uh, hold it at the certain temperature very accurately. But at home, you just put in the freezer, that's it. So you don't get the same type of crystal. So we need to know, oops. Uh, hmm. um, how, yeah, so how this recrystallization or the formation of crystal and recrystallization can affect the quality and the stability of the food. Yeah. The quality in terms of the eating quality. You know, a small crystal in the product would give a different type of texture different type of mouth feel. Big crystal will give you a different type. Yeah? That's the quality aspect. The stability aspect, um, the shelf life of the product, you know, like the chocolate. Good, fresh chocolate, you get a very nice, shiny, smooth surface. But uh, sometimes when you buy the chocolate, maybe you have noticed you get, uh, you know, the whitish spot on the surface. Looks like mole growth. But it, that is not really a, a microbial spoilage. It's just a physical separation of fat from the crystal. So this phenomenon is called bloom. Yeah, bloom uh, phenomenon. Yeah, you have learned also in commodity, right? So uh, the product is perfectly safe to eat, but it doesn't look nice, and the consumer will think that oh, the product is low quality or already spoiled. Yeah. So, um, meaning that the, the, the shelf life will be affected. Maybe, you know, you cannot sell that kind of product. 
except in Malaysia. Because Malaysian consumer, they don't really care. <laughs> they buy and they eat everything. <laughs> Not all. <coughs> okay. As usual, read more to learn more. Um, unlike the topic of food, uh, uh, unlike the topic on emulsion, rheology, a lot of reading material, a lot of references. But for crystallization, especially food, crystallization with respect to food, it's not that uh, many. But we have one good book, one very good book, Crystallization in Food by Professor Hartel from Wisconsin, U.S. Wisconsin University, U.S. Very good book. Easy to understand. Uh, if you find other books on crystallization in general, they talk they, uh, talking about general process, general process of crystallization uh, because there are a lot of, lot of non-food material that from crystal. Uh, if you use that book as a reference, you might feel a bit intimidated because it's quite complicated. Yeah? So I would recommend if you want to read a book on crystallization to learn more, this is the book. But I think there's only one copy or maybe two in the, li in the library. So if you happen to borrow this book, don't keep, eh? don't keep, um, share with others. Yeah? And I'm not telling you to photostat also. Um, but if you cannot find a book, I, I try to get this article, Sugar Crystallization in Food Products, in this journal, Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition. This is on the third floor in the reference section. But um, it is not a bound copy, it's like a loose copy. I don't know it's still there or not. I haven't been to the library for many years already. Last time, yes. Almost every you know, few days I will go to the library. But now, because everything is on the fingertips, on the, you know, just search everything in the database, so I don't go to the library anymore. I don't know what bo new books there up there. So maybe we have more of this book, I don't know. But uh, this you can find. You can find, yeah? Uh, and it's a very good uh, article talking actually specifically about sugar crystallization. But the, the principles, it, the principles are applicable for other types of uh, solute, uh, like fat crystallization and so on. But this book is the best. Um, I have summarized actually the important points in the handout. So I don't know whether you have you, do you have the handout on, on this topic? Because I know your junior are all very generous. They pass everything to you. You don't have the handout. So they don't pass everything to you. <laughs> uh, I will upload to Enmodo. Yeah? But please, again, I want to ask you, don't pass anything to your junior. Don't be too kind in this case. You can be generous and kind in other situations, but not helping your junior by giving everything to your junior, because they will become lazy. They will become lazy and they would not care or bother to develop the skill to search for information. Everything is being fed. So you become lazy. You don't develop that skill. That's why sometimes I surprise final year students. They have not looked at the scientific database. Have you read food technology? Just like I asked you earlier this semester. No. Have you read this journal? Have you seen this? Have you used this database? No. Have you used this handbook? No, no, no. Because they don't bother. They just have their handout from the lecturers. They got from the, the seniors, that is enough for them. Because all the students care is to pass the exam score A. Yeah? 
Maybe I sound a bit harsh, but that's the reality. And I don't want the USM students just know how to be fat, not knowing how to do the, you know, uh, develop the skill to search information. Okay, let's, let's look at the, uh, before we look at the crystal itself. Eh? Crystal is only one component in our food. Just think of a food. I always use ice cream as an example because ice cream is a good model system where uh, we can use ice cream when we talk about crystallization. We can use ice cream when we talk about emulsion and foam. We can use ice cream even when we discuss about even rheology also. We can use ice cream when we talk about the different food ingredients that, that we cover in IMK221. We have the stabilizers there, we have emulsion there. So ice cream is just a nice... So if you cannot think of other example during the exam or test, use ice cream. <laughs> you can't be... Uh, you can't go wrong, yeah? So, just think uh, a product like ice cream, yeah? What, uh, what are the structural elements? What are the elements or the components that form the structure in the ice cream? Just like a house. What form the structure of the house? We have the foundation, we have the piling, we have the the wall, we have the roof, those are the structural elements of a house. Similarly, in food, what are the structural elements of food? So if you take ice cream, for example, what are in the ice cream? So we have air cells, we have crystal, the fat crystal, the sugar crystal, the ice crystal. So they play an important role in determining quality and shelf stability. It is a structure that provides the desired biological properties of the food. The structure that gives us the hardness, the stiffness, the snap, and contributes to the organoleptic properties, the meltdown rate, the cooling effect, etc. And those structures come from the various elements. Yeah? Even the air bubbles in the ice cream also contribute to the structure, contribute to the mouthfeel, the fat crystal, the size of the crystal, the number of the crystal also affect the structure and affect how we perceive food when we eat or consume the food. So now, our focus on the crystal. So in the food, we always have the crystalline phase. Okay? So crystalline phase is one of the most important structural elements in many food. It has impact on quality, texture, and shelf life. For example, the crystalline microstructure of cocoa butter in chocolate provides the desired snap when a molded bar is broken. The main components that form crystalline phase are water, sugars, or sugar alcohol, lipids and starches. This is what we refer to as a crystallizing species, or the component that can crystallize in food. Water can crystallize to form ice. Fat can crystallize to form fat crystal. Sugar, sucrose, glucose, and other sugars can crystallize to form sugar. Sugar alcohol, sorbitol, maltitol, mannitol, xylitol, those also can crystallize. And even starch. You know starch? In your final year, you will learn one topic just on starch. Yeah. Starch, uh, in the original form, in the native form, they are semi-crystalline. Not full crystalline, they are semi-crystalline. Yeah, about 30% uh, starch in the original form is in the crystalline form. Other components that may crystallize, salt. Yeah? Salt, there are many different types of salt, but the one that you are most familiar with is the table salt, which is the, chemically, the, it is what? Sodium chloride. But nowadays, um, if, if you go to the supermarket actually, you can find maybe a few types of salt. Uh, iodized salt. Potassium, KCL, potassium chloride. In fact, now, more and more industries, especially in the developed countries, 
they start to replace sodium chloride um, with potassium chloride because sodium chloride what's the problem with sodium chloride the sodium yeah so those people who have prob health problem hypertension darah tinggi <laughs> macam macam tinggi lagi so the sodium in the salt is the enemy so dia tak boleh makan masin dia kata kan tak boleh makan masin because garam garam tu yang the culprit in the garam is the sodium uh, so to cater for this market or for these consumers so we have alternative type of salt in this case potassium chloride uh, there is a topic on salt that belum uh, uh, i have given the link not yet but um, we need to know about uh, the, about the what what's the alternative for salt but the problem is salt kcl we cannot use too much also because uh, it will give instead of salt uh, in, 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 instead of salty uh, taste it will give bitter yeah too much of k the potassium will give the bitter bitter taste yeah that's a problem but then you can uh, reduce the problem of having a lot of sodium in the system so salt can crystallize uh, when i went to san francisco recently um, i went to the so called the port lah um, so there's one shop selling i don't know how many different types of salt they put in a barrel and they just open it so people come and just scoop it and put in the bag not only one type of salt yeah. i took the picture maybe i can share with you i don't know when <laughs> citric acid organic acid organic acid you know uh, citric acid malic acid fumaric acid whatever acid tartaric acid they all can also crystallize so citric acid can be uh, uh, is sold in the form of crystal crystal powder proteins proteins also can crystallize but to crystallize protein is actually very difficult but they can crystallize emulsifiers emulsifiers can crystallize but they usually form in the liquid form they will form a so called liquid crystalline yeah liquid crystalline not all crystal in the form of solid we can also have liquid in a crystalline form so the emulsifiers are molecules are arranged in a certain uh, arrangement uh, in a in a ordered uh, arrangement so actually that's the technology that we use in the lcd uh, instrument yeah liquid crystalline technology so now let's learn more about the crystallization what is the meaning of crystallization crystallization is a term that describes several different phenomena so it's not only one single phenomenon it's a combination of physical phenomena related to the formation of crystalline lattice structure the easiest to the easiest analogy which i always use to understand about what is crystal and what is the process of crystallization <coughs> like in this room so if we, if we can imagine this one big room is a crystal so what what is in the crystal the crystal can be made up of the smallest unit would be atoms or the bigger unit would be from atoms we can get huh? when we put two atoms together we get what molecules okay so imagine that each one of us here is a molecule and you are sitting in an orderly manner row one row another row another row or if we look at this way 
maybe this way not very or uh, not very okay but there's a regular pattern that is the chiri chiri the characteristics of a crystal there's a regular pattern row row column column okay a regular repeated pattern one row repeat another row another row and the molecules are ordered are arranged in an ordered dalam sesu suatu susunan yang teratur so when you put the molecules together in in an ordered arrangement in a regular repeated pattern you get a crystal okay in a big crystal like this in this room we can put say a smaller unit let's say a two molecules here another two molecules here two 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 and put this two two together so each of these two we call it crystal crystalline lattice kekisi hablur i think you have we have learned this sometime during our school even maybe matriculation or stpm or even spm i think right dia panggil kekisi hablur crystal lattice So we have this small crystal lattice. We arrange it together to to uh, this one one only out <laughs> cannot fit into the crystal. Remember two 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 two. Yeah. So we get a crystal. So that's the meaning of crystalline lattice. When a crystal forms, the molecules orient themselves in a regular pattern. Regular. That's the key word. Call lattice structure. In contrast, molecules in uh, amorphous. Now we introduce a term amorphous. The lawan bagi crystal is amorphous. So in crystal we get molecules in in an ordered arrangement terato. Di dalam amorphous, the molecules are randomly they are everywhere. They are not in a regular pattern. Okay, so now you can imagine the difference between crystal and amorphous, and try to relate with the the processing condition that we need to control to get a crystal. The temperature to get a crystal, uh, let's say from liquid oil, from the fat in the liquid form, the melted form, we have to cool down. Cool down, and we have to cool down slowly, but not slow enough. But re relatively slowly, so the heating rate ha has to be controlled, so that we allow sufficient time for the molecules to arrange themselves into the proper arrangement, proper order. What happens if we cool too fast? If we cool too fast, let's say we put the oil, we add the liquid nitrogen. If we cool too fast, do you think we can get crystal? Too fast. If the cooling rate is too fast, you don't get crystal. You get amorphous. Because you know why? Uh, we can we can do a quick demo actually. But um, imagine, I ask you to go out from this room. All of you. Then I tell you now. I give you five minutes to go back and sit in your own uh, original seat. Five minutes. Of course, you open the door. You walk in. Then you can take your time. Five minutes, right? Or maybe ten minutes. Okay. So, the, in this case, the analogy is for slow cooling. Red, so we can get crystal. But now, repeat this exercise. Go out. Now I give you five second. When I say stop, you stop. Can you imagine? Those in on the front row, mungkin 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 okay, but in the back or in the middle, I give you five second. One, two, three, four, five. Freeze. Stop. 
and you will be everywhere, right? Here, over there. So now we get amorphous because the molecules are not arranged in an, in an orderly manner. Random. Huh? Ah, are more randomly oriented and move about freely. Ah, satu lagi ciri-ciri kalau an beza antara amorphous dengan crystalline. In amorphous, <coughs> in, amor in the amorphous material, the molecules are not packed close together. So it can they can still move around freely. But in crystalline state, just like in this room. The molecules are more or less fixed in their position. So there's not much room to move about. Okay. So let's look at the smaller unit of the crystal, which is the crystalline lattice. They are composed of an ordered layering of molecules with the ordering dependent on the nature of the forces and the interaction between individual molecules. Free freedom of motion is greatly restricted in crystal lattice because they are very close. Yeah? Okay. Very, very, very brief about crystalline lattice. Let's look at um, why we need to learn more about the process and why we need to understand more about how to control the process of crystallization. This important aspect of food quality because crystallization may be employed. Uh, the process of crystallization not only to produce uh, certain products, chocolate, margarine, butter, and so on, ice cream, but we can also use the process of crystallization uh, in, the, in the manufacturing process. For example, to produce sugar from sugar cane, yeah? sugar refining, uh, fat fractionation. Do you know what's the meaning of fat fractionation? Uh, like our palm oil, remember in the palm oil we have hundreds of triglycerides. Each one of them has its own specific melting point. So now, let's start with, with at high temperature and we cool down. So when we cool down, when, one, uh, when uh, the temperature is equal to one, the melting point of the one triglyceride, that triglyceride will crystallize. So at a certain range of temperature, we get a certain fraction of the triglycerides to crystallize. So we get one fraction. Then we reduce the temperature further. So, at, at this range of temperature, another portion, another fraction of triglyceride will crystallize. We get another fraction, and we can continue doing that. So, from one, originally from one palm oil, one liquid palm oil, we can get many fractions. Each fraction may consist of, um, you know, 10 or 20 triglycerides. Another fraction, another set of triglycerides. So we can use crystallization now as a way to produce different uh, types of uh, fraction from fat or in the sugar refining. We can control the, the crystallization of sucrose to finally get the pure sucrose from the syrup. And of course, we control crystallization within the food itself yeah, to get the desired uh, structure and texture, the desired uh, mouthfeel and organoleptic uh, properties. So just now when we talk about crystalline lattice, this slide should come after that. So in the crystalline lattice, crystalline lattice is the smaller unit in the crystal in the crystal in the crystal. So that 
it, uh, it, will, it will start with the, to, to form the crystal lattice, we have to start with a unit, with what we call a unit cell. Okay, unit cell. So, this one example. The unit cell can be in a cubic form. It can be in tetrahedron form and many different form you will see. But let's say, so this is one example. This is one uh, example, one, of, one unit cell. So the molecules or the atoms are arranged in, in that cubic cell. Then we stack another unit cell on top of it. Then we get a crystalline lattice. The rest of this crystal can be built by stacking identical unit set. No. Okay. So uh, this from the book just now from the book. So this actually how the sucrose molecules are arranged in the crystalline lattice.